This is a video for how to go about creating your T9 axle part drawing in an inventor drawing sheet. Uh, you will notice, depending upon how you downloaded each part, that there are two different axles. There is one that is after 2016's version, and then there is another one that is an older um an older T9 axle that is green. The same principles will apply here. So you'll notice that they are similar parts. They are both axles from the Automoblox car, but as far as how we go about making the drawing, the same principles will hold true. So to make a new drawing, we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to New, and we will go to English, and we will go to ANSI.IDW. Inventors uh, ANSI.IDW stands for Inventor Drawing. So we will go ahead and say Create. And you'll have a drawing be created. To change the size of the drawing sheet, we want to right click on sheet one and go to edit sheet. And I have all of my students create their drawings on an A size sheet. So if we choose to print on an eight and a half by 11 printer, we can do that. Now when we say OK, you're going to notice that this title block down here gets way too big for the sheet. It's way out of proportion. So we're just going to delete that. We're going to right click and go to ANSI large and go to delete. We're going to go ahead and place our axle on our drawing. So I'm going to choose to do the newer axle that is gray. Now you're going to notice that automatically this uh, green one showed up because it's the last part that I opened up in Inventor. It's automatically going to see that. Now I'm going to choose to use the T9 axle. And I'm going to say open. And you'll, I want a larger view of this object. And in fact, I think... I might want to look straight down on the object when we create this part. So I want to look straight down to where I cannot see this little cut in the side. So I'm going to click on my view cube and look straight down. And for the scale, I'm going to go to, let's see here, 3 to 1 is where I'm going to go. I'm going to click and hold down and drag this up in the top left-hand corner of my screen. And I'm going to click OK. And you're going to notice that we have ourselves a view that has all of our hidden lines in the object. Now, I don't necessarily want hidden lines in my top view, so we want to get rid of those. We're going to drag our mouse to the bottom right-hand corner down in here, anywhere along one of these lines, and you're going to see the, that little, those directional arrows show up. Right-click and go to Edit View. And when this comes back up, you are going to see this oblique cube with kind of this sphere up here. And I want this one that says hidden line removed. And we're going to say OK. And our hidden lines are gone. We'll, um, it'll make more sense as we go on why I got rid of the hidden lines. Now we want to create a section view of this top view in order to see the inner workings of the part. So what we want to do is make sure we do not have the view selected. If you have the view selected, some of the um, instructions I'll give here in a second won't make all, a whole lot of sense. So you want to make sure that you do not have the view selected. So I'm going to escape on my keyboard and you're going to see that square go away. We are going to go up to the word section and click on section. And when that shows up, you're going to drag your mouse out, and when you see the red square show up, you click. And you're going to see this kind of plus show up. We're not going to click. We're just going to drag our mouse until we see a green dot. You know, the green dot means that we have the center of that line, the midpoint. And I'm not clicking. I'm just going to drag to the left until I see that black dotted line. And I want to click once, drag all the way through the object, click again, right click and go to continue. And I'm going to drag straight down. And you're going to notice what happens is it gives us a section view where it cuts this object right in half. This is a section view. Where you see these diagonal section lines, that is where material was cut when this cutting plane line went through the object. So something that we are going to need um, is going to be center lines that go down through the center of this object. Now we could come up to the annotate button and put in center lines a different way. We could use something known as the center line bisector tool, where we can click on center line bisector and go in between the horizontal lines that we want center lines to be. Now there's an easier way to go about doing this. On your view, right click when you see the directional arrows show up and go down to automated center lines. And when you go to automated center lines, you're going to notice that there's these options you can choose, whole features and fillets and cylindrical features. What we want is we want the whole feature, and we're going to choose a cylinder, and we're going to choose revolved features. We revolved this object. It is symmetrical, and there are holes in the middle of it. Now, for projection, we're going to say in this type of a view where we are looking straight down on top of the axle where all we would see is circles, which is a view we don't have on the sheet right now, and the objects in view with parallel axes. We're going to click on this and we're going to say OK. 
and you're going to notice we automatically got this center line in the middle. Now I want to drag this center line out by clicking on these green points and drag them out. There is an automated center line for us. We did not have to come up here and click between a whole bunch of different things. It gave us that automated center line. Our next step for this object is to use baseline dimensioning. Now when we go to um, annotate up here, you're going to notice the word baseline. Click on baseline. And what we want to do is we want to click on in order every vertical line that we see. And we're going to click in order from left to right each one of the vertical lines that we see as we go. Now this is a symmetrical object. I don't have to click on the bottom. It's all going to be the same as the top. After I've clicked from left to right in order each one of our vertical lines, we're going to right click and go to continue. And I'm going to drag straight up. And when I get that first snap right here, I'm going to left click to place, right click, and say create. Now, you're going to notice that the dimensions go up into my object. I'm going to click and drag down this object. What you'll notice is baseline dimensioning starts from one line and just kind of goes back and forth. I, I equate this to running like wind sprints in a, in like a, on a sports team or something. All these lines start from here and go back and forth to the same point. It makes it an easy reference for you to see how the distances from each individual point. Chain dimensioning would go from one point to the next point, so we would have to add these up. It should be an automatic reference for us to see the dimensions when we look at this object. Our next dimension that we will do will be placing um, diameter dimensions on the object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to just the word dimension up here in the top left. And what we will do in this case is we're going to go from the top down here to the bottom to avoid crossing extension lines. I want to avoid doing this. I don't want to cross these lines up here. So we're going to do this off of the bottom. So our first dimension is going to be from our center line. And we're just going to walk this out to this line right here. This is the first horizontal line in order. And as we drag out, you're going to see it says 0 0.09. I want to right click and go to dimension type and go to linear diameter. And you're going to notice it's going to give us a diameter dimension. And I'm going to click. What they're saying is the distance from here to the opposite side is 0.19. So we don't have to come up here and go in between two objects. It's going to automatically give us the diameter symbol. We don't need the opposite extension line and the opposite dimension line because this is a symmetrical object. We're going to go to dimension again. Center line to this line. Right click. Dimension type. Linear diameter and I'm going to click as I drag out. Same thing. Line. We're going to skip. Uh, we can. I guess we can go to here, but let's just skip over that for now. You're going to notice all this detail in here. We're not going to dimension to these detailed grooves. I generally don't get into that with my students. I just try to keep the main thing, the main thing here. You could spend a lot of time dimensioning these. But we're just going to go from our center line out to here. Right click, dimension type, linear diameter. And one thing you can do when you drag out is you can cut kind of try to keep these, let's say, on the same line together. You can drag these up. If I right click and go to OK, you can kind of drag these up and try to keep them in some kind of alignment where you can just follow the dimension line down and you can see exactly what the diameter is. Last one, dimension, center line, bottom line, right click, dimension type, linear diameter. And I'm going to come up and place this next to it. And you can tell now that we have all of our diameter, all their diameter dimensions are placed right here. I'm going to right click and say OK. Now, what we are wanting to do next is we want to project um, this uh, uh, kind of a side view of this over here on the side. In order to do that, we're going to go to Place Views and just go to Projected and tap on Projected and then tap on your section view and drag to your right. And automatically, it's going to give you a projection of that. We can go to the top right-hand corner up here, too, and place a isometric section view, which is kind of cool, which is what we'll do. We're going to place this view, come up to the top right, and click and right-click and say Create. And you're going to notice we now have ourselves all of our concentric circles by looking over here at the side. One thing we will need to place in our side view, just to give us an idea of what the side view looks like, is going to be a center mark. We're going to go to Annotate. Center mark is this little plus shape right here. We click on this. We click on the outside groove. And we get ourselves a center mark. You'll notice that if I came up to Dimension and I said, you know, the far outside circle, let's drag out. Notice it gives me that 0.57, which is the same over here. We tend to not do the diameter dimensions over here because to make this object, we would just draw half of this and then revolve it. So next step that we want to look at is the, kind of this groove that's cut over here in the back of the object. So if we go up to Place Views, and if I go back to Base, 
and I need to go back to find my T, my T9 axle here, and I go to open, I want to try to find this view right here, and we're going to drag this up next to our top view. Let's just drag this up next to our top view, and I'm going to say OK. And you're going to notice we have our hidden lines here, and that's fine. We'll just keep them for the sake of discussion here. Now, we have this view, but it's unconstrained. I can drag it wherever I want. I want to horizontally constrain this with the top view. I'm going to right-click when the square shows up and go to Alignment and go to Horizontal. And I'm going to click on my top view. And this is now horizontally aligned. See how I drag this? This is now horizontally aligned. So we can kind of tell where the depth of the... We can come down here and notice that we didn't dimension the depth from here to here. So we will do that in our top view. Let's go to annotate dimension and we're going to click from this line to this line and drag straight down. It is 0.2 deep and we're going to go ahead and get ourselves our thickness from here to here and it's 0 0.04. It is symmetrical. It's in the middle of the object. We could have done that down here but instead we're creating for ourselves a little bit of a special view up here and we're going to keep this. Now to make this uh, this kind of half isometric view of our section view in color, we're going to right click and we're going to go to edit view and we're going to come over and you're going to notice it doesn't really want to let me mess with that at all. And if I check this box, uncheck this box, it's going to let me come in here and change some things. And I want this to be shaded. So we're going to click on shaded and say OK. And it shaded that object. This right here is the T9 axle part drawing. Um, this gives a good idea of how to do baseline dimensioning, how to project views, create section views, um, create cutting plane lines, and really a lot of neat things you can do with a drawing sheet. Have a good day.